Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Bruce and Ed Live. Bruce and Ed Live from New York. York. <laughs> I'm Bruce. And I'm Ed. Who are you? Great what are you to doing see here? you. Great to see you. Welcome um, to another day in the life of Bruce and Ed. Um, today's episode is sponsored by Arvix Web Hosting. A R V I X E dot com. And. Dropbox and Mountain Rose Herbs. So we'd like to thank them for their support. Yes, thank you very much. You can always chat with us uh, and give us feedback or questions during the live taping of the show in several ways. You can join the chat room, Gmail chat, Google Talk, Twitter at reply, send us an email, text message, SMS, all sorts of different ways. Just go to breadtv.com. That's where we live. B R E D T V dot com. And uh, check out the links there for live feedback, chat. And you can also send us messages anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and we will read it, like viewer email or even voicemail messages. There's a phone number you can call. And uh, we'll either read it or, you know, or play it uh, and uh, address those on the next day's broadcast. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, Wow, you said that very quick. Yeah, time. I told you I was going to I was gonna shorten it. Yeah, because I was like, the last time it took like half of the show. <laughs> So <laughs> exactly, we're li- making baby steps. We're improving, you know. We're getting all kinds of great feedback and on all sorts of things. The volume of the audio and the lighting and especially somebody, at the beginning of the message. intro, it was very loud. This morning when I woke up, I looked at my email. And there was a message that said that they liked the lighting dark better. Like when we did it at the night one time, they like, oh, they like that artificial dim lighting. We look better. Really? Well, well of course, I we probably look better. Do we look younger. Everybody looks better in the dark. I don't know. I don't know. This is was natural. That a, was that an insult? or? I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to <laughs> pursue that. But anyway, um, this is natural lighting. Like There's all natural lighting coming in that side and artificial lighting over there. But anyway, um, let's get right to our guest today. We have live with us from Albuquerque, New Mexico, <laughs> live via Skype, award-winning author and writing and creativity coach and dear friend now. Uh, Mark David Gerson of markdavidgerson.com. Are you there, Mark? Mark David. Hello. I sure. Good I morning. Sh- that's right. It's Mark David. I sure am. Mark Great. David. Good morning. Welcome. Good I said morning. it right, didn't I? Mark David. Well, you said Mark. Did I? Mm-hmm. I did it again. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. Mark mm-hmm. David. Mark, Mark David. David. I'll say it three more <laughs> times to make up for it. Mark <laughs> David Gerson. <laughs> Welcome. Anyway. You're like uh, bright and bushy tailed. It's the middle of the night in New Mexico. Well, I'm, I don't know about bushy tailed. I'm not, I don't know about bright, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we see your smiling face, so uh, <laughs> looks like you're up and <laughs> you're 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 vibrating again. Is your laptop hot already? <laughs> it's been it's been on for a while. Did you remember the tray? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you guys have been, well, you guys have been setting up. That's right. <laughs> yes, those laptops they burn my legs. I have to use a TV tray or whatever, like a breakfast yeah, in bed. Yeah, I'm using that. That that did that, that writing writing thing, you know? Yeah. Lap lap desk, lap desk. Oh, didn't, oh nice. Didn't your staff bring you breakfast in bed with the laptop on a tray and a little rose and yeah, a vase? Yeah, I I, I I don't know what, I don't know where they are. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. <laughs> you gotta ring the bell. <laughs> well, we're putting it out there. Yeah. Gotta ring the bell. That's right. <laughs> We believe that. Whatever you think Even about a lot. Staff, it's too early in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever you think about a lot, you're going to manifest in your life. So be careful what you think about a lot. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yes. Yeah, so have you been to bed yet or you just got up? Right, can you hear me? Um, I have yeah. been to bed and, I, and, and I'm up. I actually <laughs> don't normally set my alarm, but for, but for you guys, because you're so special, I did that. Well, great, thank you. great. Thanks for joining us. Here's a long really day. Who's thinking it. about how to answer that? Let's see. Should I be honest? I just got in from clubbing all night now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's, <laughs> so what's going on in the world of uh, Mark David? <laughs> What's going on? You're, you're, doing, you're. What's going on in the world of Mark David? Wow. <laughs> Talk about your open-ended question. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing all sorts of book tours, and uh, I know that you're uh, 
we just talked uh, briefly right before we started about your um, award winning. You've won some awards for your books already. Oh yes. <laughs> Got the stick. Hold up your books. Let's see. I what, have. Let's see. The, let's see. I've won. Let's see. One. Okay, so I've won two. This is this is, this book is called The Voice of the Muse the and Swing the Call to Write. There That's your go. first one. I'm waiting for, for it to show up on your screen. There we go. Yeah, The screen. Voice of the Muse, Answering the Call to and Write. And it's won two awards. Two awards, okay. It's won two awards, but I can't put two stickers on because it looks kind of tacky. Yeah. <laughs> you put one on the side, one on the back. Overlap them. I don't want to be, be, I don't want to be too much of a show off. Yeah. This is um, this one, an, an independent publisher's book award. And it also won a New Mexico Book Award because hey, I, I'm, I'm in New Mexico, right? Uh-huh. So that's one of the books. And the voice of the muse. This is. Uh, a, a, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so, sorry. And this is a fantasy called The Moon Quest, a true fantasy. A true. Fantasy. It also won an Independent Publishers Book Award. It also won a New Mexico Book Award, and it won three other awards as well, which is kind of cool. Wow. So, and I'm working on a working on a sequel to that right now, and. Exciting. Um, I'm working <laughs> on a screenplay adaptation that I actually have a producer tentatively interested in. So, oh my God. coming to a big screen near you one of these days. The Moon cool. Quest. Great. Cool. I hope. We have, a, we have a lot of, by the way, the Moon Quest. interject Moon Quest. So, the, well, we have a lot of friends because we're in New York. We have a lot of friends, you know, that work in Broadway, actors and uh, and screenwriters too. So, um, we'll have to to you know connect you. I'm sure they'll they'll be learning of you. Uh, through this if they haven't already heard of you and vice versa but yeah the the city is full of talent you know writers and uh, actors and musicians of course all of them half of our friends are in that business it seems Mm -hmm. like in this city yeah we have a one of our friends now is uh, writing also screen he's a screenplay writer as well Mm -hmm. and writing a a show halfway through it so the the moon quest is is a novel is that right yes okay Yes, yes and the other one is not the, um, no, the other one is a bo- is it's a book about writing for mm-hmm. anyone who the either wants to write, uh, wants to like to write, um, wants to find a new way to write. <laughs> wants to like it's to write. It's a combination of inspiration and practical tools and techniques and exercises. I like that. Wants to write. Wants to like to write. Like I want. I want to like to work out. <laughs> but I, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't have. If you get that book, you, yeah. can, you can get me a copy. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wants to like to write. Like I, I like you know, to write. When I'm doing, when I'm doing like book signings, and you know I'm not famous yet, except in my own mind. And sure uh, so book You're signings for me are more of a hustle than than big long lineups outside out, outside to the street. Right. And so one of the things that I ask people, you know, as I'm shipping them when they walk into the store, is, "Do you like to write?" And of course, half the, half the people will say no. And so the next question I ask, "Would you like to like to write?" Mm. Which usually which usually gets their attention, or at least yeah. attention of some of them. Yeah, yeah. that would be me, because uh, I, I would love to... I, I always say learn how to write, I guess, but uh, not that I well, don't know how to write. It starts with, I'd love to be a writer, therefore I'd love to write, therefore uh, I'd love to like writing, because mm-hmm. then all the rest would be easy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, well, I don't know, I don't know if, if this probably won't pick up, but here on the back cover it says, let's see, there, where my which, finger which, is, which book is you'll this? never feel the same about writing again. Oh, right. This is the writing, this is the so Voice of the Muse. it's kind of like, this, uh, the voice the, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like everyone has a, not just a, a, write, a voice, but you, you're able to, the ability to write, right? Skill or ability? What about skill? I mean, yeah. that's a whole nother I mean, my, uh, book. <laughs> skill, well, you skill. know, skill can be le- skill can be learned. Yes. Um, but everyone's everyone's actually, I believe, everyone's innately creative, and anyone can write, which doesn't guarantee you're going to get the the Pulitzer next year, but mm-hmm. um, maybe the year <laughs> after. But <laughs> but you certainly can write. Mm-hmm. Um, and w- one of my favorite chapters and the sections in the book, not because of the content, but because of the, of the name of it, uh-huh. is I don't know if this is going to show up because it's. Um, it's in a funny font, and you know it's not exactly clear. I'll just say what it is. You can it's tell called us. it's called birthing your book, even if you don't know what it's about. Ooh, mm. does it have illustrations? <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of book. birthing uh, your yeah. book, even if you don't know what it's about. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody, you know, they like say everybody's got a story, and that's so true. Every yeah. human being. Well, if you're trapped on an elevator with somebody, you might just you know long enough. Or on a, a d- desert island, maybe it'd be a better example. You will hear their story, and everybody's got an amazing story yeah. in them. At least yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> At well, least one. Well, the, 
the title of that section came to me when I was when I was um, asked to give a talk in Sedona. This was before the book came out. Um, I was actually doing a talk at a bookstore to promote the Moon Quest, and um, I used to live in Sedona. And um, people would come up to me all the time and say, "I keep being told, you know, they go for a psychic reading. I keep being told I've got a book in me, but I don't know what it's about." Oh. So I realized that you don't have to know what it's about to start, right. and that's where the, that's where, that's where that section of the book kind of kicked in. In fact, I teach a workshop well. with that title as well because it's, it's 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 kind of catchy. You get your best stuff, like everybody else. You get your best stuff from talking to people, asking them questions yeah. and things. Sure. Yeah, sure. like you know where we. This is a it's kind of a sidebar, but where we you know decided that um, like on the on the, the Bruce Wagner show we're going to do it's uh, the topic categories. That's that's where I got that because I did I did research and asked people you know what are the I did a poll actually on Twitter and I asked people what is the biggest challenge facing you in your life now. Well, first of all. I make this short, short story. But I started with um, a mission of saying I w- we want to help as many people as we possibly can in the most profound ways possible. So starting with that, I asked people in a poll what issues uh, or challenges are the biggest challenge facing you in your life right now. And number one was something to do with money. It always had to do, number one was money. Something around money, jobs, <laughs> finances, something like that. And the second one was body, something to do with health, fitness, nutrition, disease, obesity, something to do with health or body. And the third one was love, something to do with relationships, mm. finding Mr. Right, getting rid of Mr. Wrong, whatever, whatever. You know, <laughs> all these things about relationships. It was money, body, love. So those are the three categories. And then personal technology and celebrity, those are kind of like fetishes everybody sort of has somewhere in them. And then spirit is kind of like everything else that affects everybody in the world. So that's kind of the same thing. When you hear, when you uh, when you talk to people and you ask them questions, you get the best answer. And also, another thing I notice is that you get the same answer over and over and over again. You know, there's some there's some universality to our consciousness, right? When you ask someone, like, do you like to write? And then when you say, you know, a lot of them said no. And then would you like to like to write? Yes. Yeah. So it's there's exactly. you know, right? Don't they like? It's amazing when you can ask a whole lot of people in different places the same thing and they all say the same answer. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 no, absolutely. Like the universe is telling you something. <laughs> a lot of people would like to write a book. A lot of you know that um, the I think it was the American Association of Publishers, some some publishers group with USA Today did a poll some years back and discovered that eighty two percent, eighty two percent of Americans say. They plan to write a book someday. Yeah, that what, doesn't what surprise percent, me. I wonder what percent bought a book this year. <laughs> well, yeah, well, there's that, and I wonder what percent actually did anything about it. Right. They're, they're going down to the two, not the eighty-two, probably. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But still, there's right. there's there's a certain kind you're, of cachet around that notion. By the way, you're bouncing. Um, you're uh, you're like on a writing a, a book. Uh, you're bouncing up and down. But like you're right. Some people have read a book. That's a really good question. Probably not eighty-two percent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's I believe that totally, and also. Talking about, uh, we were talking about video netcasts, you know, a, a talk show thing. I'll bet you, if you, it'd probably be the same percentage. Everybody wants to do a, a talk show. Everybody wants to do a video talk show. But once again, they're not doing anything about it. And it doesn't. It takes. It takes a lot. I mean, you have to make a real commitment and and uh, devote yourself to it to be serious about it and all that. But yeah, when it comes well, that- to writing, that's even more because it's creative. It's coming out of you. Right. Well, in fact, it's on one hand, process. the um, the talk show requires more because you have to have some some technological know how or money, you know, <laughs> or and both. money, yeah, or access <laughs> or to, both, yeah, to, exactly to, to technology. Right. Whereas you don't even need a computer to write, although it's certainly easier. All you need is all you need is is you know a forty nine cent pen and two dollar notepad from Walmart, and you yeah. and you're all set. Yeah. Yeah, or a piece of chalk, <laughs> or something, or anything, crayons, chalk, yeah. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. or, or a rock on your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> in a cave. Yeah, you could pretty much, if you can write, if you have the ability to uh, put words on paper, yeah, so, it's true. So how do you um, how do you bring out, like, someone's innate uh, creativity, like, when they just can't find it within themselves, like, as a coach? They're stuck on expressing what? it. One of the things that I do in my workshops a lot is I use guided meditation and guided visualization um, because for me one of the most important things is to help people get out of their own way. 
we're all, in many aspects of our lives, we're all ultra judgmental, ultra critical, ultra ultra doubting, um, over analytical, over logical, and creativity doesn't operate on on any of those frequencies. Creativity right. makes no sense. It's mm-hmm. illogical. It's not analytical. It's 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 magic. It's alchemy. So and so to get people. To get people into a different state, um, mm. I'll often use meditations. In fact, I'll, sh- I'll, I'll hold this up because this is actually um, the voice of the, v- it's the, voice of the muse here. companion guided meditations for writers two CD right. set. Nice. Yeah. I um, love guided meditations. Um, anyway, because it's all about getting you into a state where you're prepared to surrender to your creativity. Yeah. So leave your ego at the door. In- mm-hmm. Sorry? Leave your ego at the door. (laughs) Yeah. We spend a lot of time in resistance. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also spend a lot of time in our lives as well as in our creativity trying to control the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the way creativity works, at least for me, and the way I teach it is you're not in charge, so get over it. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel. The The best stuff that comes out of your writing or your mouth or whatever is not coming from you anyway it's coming through you you're just a conduit and if you just let go one time i gave a speech long story i won't tell it now but i gave this speech to a a huge group you know i don't know for me it was a huge group like 1500 people in a big in a big thing it was a grand opening of a venture that he and i started and and i i just didn't prepare at all i was way too busy and i just stood up there and spoke and it was like standing ovations and everyone was complimenting me afterwards and you know what I couldn't I could for the for the life of me then and now I can't remember one word I said <laughs> I can't remember not even one word but it just whatever it was it just kind of flew through me like elect, like an elect, like a static electric shock just beep, it just went through me yeah. and I think that's what you're talking about is releasing the blocks and letting it flow absolutely and I have a similar speaking story as well where I thought I had done the the worst thing I'd ever done because I was unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> I'd been guided to be unprepared, which was also kind of scary. I, I, I was guided to... to, to Don't prepare. To, yeah. Prepare nothing except... Don't waste your time preparing. <laughs> and, We're good at that. And to just get up there and do it. And I sat down after, hoping the earth would swallow me up. Mm. Um, and I was told after it was the best thing I'd ever done. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Again, because you're in that place of... Total surrender to spirit, if you want to put it that way, uh, yes. to your muse, if you want to put it that way, just mm-hmm. to allow. I mean, what you did, Bruce, was you connected with your, with yourself, your higher self, and the audience, mm-hmm. and gave them exactly what they what they came there to get. Yeah, yeah. Even and it wasn't really for me. Was <laughs> it wasn't for me. And, I just got all the uh, credit, I guess. <laughs> but it really wasn't yeah. for me. Well, yeah. and you know, you get credit um, for releasing and letting go, and just let it, letting it flow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I, I your taught last have week to be at the right? conference in Santa Fe, and I taught these same concepts, which were a little radical for screenwriters who are so structure oriented and frankly yeah. controlling of the process sure. a lot of the time. That it was, I mean, it was a little, it was, it was somewhat radical. You know, I was saying, don't let, don't put structure first, put content first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, there are so many. Kind of structural and 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 there's so many rules around screenwriting. It has mm-hmm. to be this. It has to look like that. It has to be so many pages. I yeah. mean, that that can be constricting, but they have nothing to do with the story. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like, st- and for me, it's all about starting with the story and letting the letting the structure serve the story. Yeah. Rather than than taking a structure and trying to bang a story into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The way I think of it is like if you're if you're writing. The, you know the world's most wonderful letter, like the old-fashioned letter. The structure is is when you're done. It's it's folding it, putting it in the right envelope, putting the right postage on it, and addressing it, and all the phys- and taking it to the mailbox. But that's not the the substance. Is the actual letter itself. That's right. The rest of it is just the the fluff, the details, the you know trivia, really mm-hmm. around it or after the fact. Mm-hmm. The the substance is the meat of it, right? Obviously. <laughs> well, whenever I teach a workshop, whatever the topic, I usually hand out um, a set of often thirteen because that, that's where my control is. I want it to be thirteen so-called <laughs> rules. <laughs> thirteen rules for writing. I read rules somewhere. Thirteen is good. Building character rules for for birthing your book, and the first rule in all of those, and the thirteenth, is there are no rules. Uh, mm-hmm. 
That's why there's really only 12 rules. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's really only 12 rules, that's right. That's so right. You, you see, I cheat because yeah. sometimes there's more material that will fit in 13, so I have like 6A and 7B. Uh, and <laughs> so do you, know, do We you, all have control issues. That's where mine comes can up. Can you fit them all into one tweet on Twitter? That's the question. See, that takes talent. But anyway, what were you going to yeah. say? I was just going to say, do you find that working in your workshops uh, with your you know, students or whatever you want to call them, um, do you find that it's hard for those people that have had like a structured uh, system of writing or education, for that matter, uh, as opposed to someone that's just getting into it and doesn't really have a formal education, is it easier or harder for them to get unstuck from that or... What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think I, I think that's an individual situation. Um, certainly, a lot of workshops are kind of unteaching rather than teaching, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of re- reconditioning or maybe restoring. Yeah, restoring. Um, you know, when I used to, this doesn't happen quite so often anymore. But when I first started teaching writing, when I would go around the room at the beginning of a class or a workshop and you know and ask people to to share their names and why they were there and, and, and what their story was around writing. What I used to get a lot was, I used to love to write until dot, dot, dot. Mm. And, and sadly, that until was, was often a teacher or a college professor or a school experience of some sort um, that, that kind of shut them down because they had to write a certain way or they had to write about a certain thing. Mm. And, um, you know when you're connecting with your passion, which is what creativity is for me, there, there can't be a rule like that. I mean, you're writing what comes from the heart. Right. I want to ask you about writing style also, and uh, get into that in just a moment. But at this point, um, if you don't mind, we really want to take a moment and uh, just thank our sponsors. <laughs> because we, we're so grateful for our, our sponsors uh, bringing you to us, <laughs> bringing us to you, whatever. And um, so, <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's do that real quick. Um, we want to thank first Arvix Web Hosting. It's a r v i x e dot com. Arvix Web Hosting. I used to say um, Arvix. I don't know why, because it looks like Arvix, but it's I guess it's pronounced Arvix. A r v i x e dot com. Arvix Web Hosting is awesome. We we use it for um, all of our sites. We're transitioning all of our hosting and our domain registration over to Arvix, and um, we love it. They're not only their uptime. I mean, we've never had any downtime or outage with it at all. Whereas we have with other uh, web hosting companies, and um, it's so nice. I mean, some people who are technical like to. Um, you know, the, the old-fashioned diehard technologists sometimes like to host their own servers and all that, but not me. I've been in technology for, you know, longer than many of you have been alive. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, you know, since like 16, a high school or whatever, I've been in IT. And I am not a fan of hosting my own servers because as soon as I, you know... Uh, Somebody's blow drying their hair, and the cir- the circuit, the fuse goes out, or I'm not home. I could be out of town, and the electricity goes out, or something goes wrong. The internet goes down. Anything can happen, and your whole website goes down. So no way. I'll definitely outsource it. So I'm a big fan of having, uh, obviously, you know, outsourced web hosting. Fix is great for one. See, you limited bandwidth, unlimited storage, unlimited everything, unlimited traffic, even an unlimited number of .com or .whatever domain names hosted with one hosting account. So that's what we do. We're in the process of switching all of our hosting uh, and domains over to it as they expire or come up for renewal. We're switching them over to Arvix. And we love it. The the best thing I think about it is that I can call them. And I talk to Ryan 24 hours a day, seven day. I don't know if this guy works 24 hours a day or what, but he's um, he's here in the U.S. and he speaks the same language as me, and he understands that he's a tech, not, he's technical, <laughs> very very technical, and um, he'll, and helpful, <laughs> completely helpful, really 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 nice. They tell you um, what uh, how to do it. Or they'll just do it for you, or both, whatever. But they're excellent, excellent customer service, 24 hours a day, whether it's by email or um, telephone. So thanks, Arvix, for uh, your support. And then, secondly, we would like to thank Dropbox. Dropbox Dropbox.com. And Dropbox is, uh, you know, we we tell you about Dropbox all the time. We couldn't live without it. We uh, have the 
first of all, they give you two gigabytes free, and it's offline storage and data synchronization and sharing. So basically, the way I think of it is, it's like kind of like our personal and business file server. It's like a file server, but it's out on the web and local. It's both. It's automatically synchronized. When I save a file into my computer, first of all, I save all files into my Dropbox folder. So all my folder structures are inside of my Dropbox folder. And when I save a, a document, I create a document, a spreadsheet, presentation. It could be anything, even photos, music, video, anything. I save it inside in, on my computer like normal, but inside of the Dropbox folder. Boom, instantly, all the other computers go boom, 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 boom. New file was just saved. And so there's a copy of it on every computer we own, even laptops, even your cell phone. Mm -hmm. You have an Android phone or an iPhone. There's a Dropbox app for everything, Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu Linux, as well as iPhone and Android. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's free. It's two gigabytes for free. And they give you, like, if you have... Like if you ha they give you a link, and if you invite other people that use that link, then you can get I think it's more up free to space. more free space up to I think up to get ten gig gigabyte, is which is a lot. You know? Yeah, yeah, you definitely get uh, more free space by referring your friends. But um, if you need more space than that, like we do, of course, you can go you can get a bigger and bigger and bigger account. So we have like um, we have the hundred gigabyte account, and then because we've referred people, we get the maximum referrals. So ours is up to like 116 gigs. So we have 116 gigabytes of storage. So mm -hmm. it's it's uh, on every computer, on every phone. It's also out on the internet, and we can go to any computer anywhere. I could go to your house, get on your browser, go to Dropbox.com, and log into my account, and there's all my files and all my data. I can just click on a file and download a copy locally, so I can access all my information everywhere, everywhere, anywhere on the planet. It's brilliant. We love Dropbox. Yeah, and the other thing is that. Um we believe that everyone should have Dropbox because they give you two free gig and then you can get up to 10. And the reason being is that, um, you There's know, a lot of people to. have a backup on like a, another hard drive. But, you know, if that hard drive fails or something happens, then you don't have that anymore. So it's and there's not the do. best backup. It's completely automatic. There's nothing to do. There's no routine or anything. It's like as soon as it's saved, boom. As soon as it's updated, boom. It just happens automatically. There's no reason not to have it, and 2 gig is free. So, so. Dropbox.com, get it. <laughs> okay, and then finally, MountainRoseHerbs.com. MountainRoseHerbs.com. They're the uh, they're a co-op that uh, specializes in organic and sustained uh, sustainable farming. So all of their products come from uh, certified organic um, farms, and uh, they actually inspect them. And uh, most of their products are bulk, as in like one pound. Or, but you can get less as well. But the main thing is that their prices are some of the best in the industry, especially when it comes to organics. Uh, you'll pay about 25, well, 25% to 90% less than the, you know, your general store, uh, nutrition store, and what stuff do like they that. Sell? They sell besides they herbs. They sell uh, besides herbs. They sell like oils, essential oils. Um, Beauty products, soaps, um, I mean, you super name foods. it. Superfoods, that's what you buy, right? Su yeah, superfoods is what I buy, like um, chlorella, algae, and uh, amaca, which is like a root powder, uh, powdered spinach. I mean, there's tons of stuff. You can go through their catalog. They have great, great stuff. I highly recommend them. Ed makes green smoothies. This is all the rage if you're, you know, even if you're not into necessarily vegan, raw, organic um, just in the health, they, he makes these green smoothies. He, he's got a Vitamix, but used to use just a regular blender. And he throws all these superfoods in there with greens, right? Mm -hmm. Organic greens from the, from the grocery. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he makes these green smoothies. You know, sometimes they taste better than others, depending on what he threw in there. But they're <laughs> super, super, super nutrition. You can't get any more nutrition than that. Yeah. If you want to lose weight, that's the way to go. And it's like a, it's like a meal replacement because it's very filling and uh, super, super healthy. So you can get it. You, you're guaranteed of the quality that it's organic and that uh, it's you know all about sustained agriculture. And I mean, their their company is founded on that. 
but and and best of perhaps best of all the price you can't beat it because you know it's it's an internet price it's not the same as uh, going to the local uh, um, you know health food store or something that's definitely marked up high mm-hmm. so we want to thank uh, Mountain Rose Herbs for sp- supporting us and bringing us to you and We're someone in the chat room wrote Dropbox is one of the best apps to have on a computer plus it works on Linux. We, I don't think we mentioned that, but yes, yeah. it sure does. I did. We use Ubuntu Linux. Was that you, Mark, David, who said that in the chat room? No. No. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. He's sitting there adding to the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you may have sold me on it right, right on the spot. So Yes. Make sure you go to breadtv.com and click on the link. In the When you go to bredtv.com and then re- for each episode, there's show notes, and the first thing is the link for the... Uh, for the sponsors and stuff. And it, by the way, we didn't mention this. If you click on the Dropbox link there, you you will get a um, an extra bonus of free space. So it won't be two gig. You'll get two and a quarter gig or something like that. So you get a little bit more free space right off the bat. So it's worth doing that. Cool. Go to breadtv.com and click that before you sign up. So uh, anyway, so yeah, what I wanted to ask you right before that was um, about writing style because... You know, I, w- I was raised uh, in, as a good Catholic boy growing up and going to Mass before school every day at St. Nicholas in Zanesville, Ohio. And we were, you know, we, we were taught, um, I mean, it's an excellent education. So in spite of what anybody else may think about anything else, it was an excellent education. So I did learn um, English grammar, uh, and I think that my grammar is better than most people, definitely most people you know, in the U.S. <laughs> under my age. Mm-hmm. But what about when you're writing and um, I, even though my grammar is good and I, I and I can you know I could pretty much write well uh, grammatically, I like to write um, in a style like I speak, just completely casual. Is that acceptable? Is that I mean, would editors approve of that, or it depends on what you're writing? Well, of course, I go back to my rule number one, which says there are no rules, are no which rules. you probably didn't learn in, in Catholic English, English class. But, but yeah, right. They're quite the opposite. There's nothing but rules. That's rule number that's one. Right, that's right. <laughs> and rulers. Yeah. Rules and rulers. <laughs> <laughs> rulers to enforce the rules. That's right. right. That's why they call them rulers. I just thought of that. Anyway. <laughs> um, what I would say is that when you're writing, write using your voice, I don't mean your spoken voice, but write in the, in the way that's most natural for you, um, and to re- because that will support the, the subject you're writing about. I mean, I, you'll write about different things in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, grammar and spelling and punctuation are incredibly important because they're there would allow the reader to actually Understand. follow what you've written. Yeah, of course. But you don't need to worry about that in your first draft. Yeah. In fact, I would suggest that's the last thing you need to worry about yeah. in your first draft. Yeah. Your first draft is getting the material onto the page, the story right. onto the page. And, it's, and when I use the word story, I'm talking about everything. And it, it could be nonfiction as well as fiction. It could right. be an article as well as a novel. Um, just get it out. And, mm-hmm. don't, and, and an important way to avoid getting blocked or to avoid getting into those places of judgment I talked about before is to keep writing and don't stop. Mm-hmm. And don't stop to worry about grammar, and don't stop to worry about spelling, mm. and don't stop to worry about punctuation, and turn off all the spell checks in mm. your word processor, and turn off mm. all the oh, grammar checks in your word processor, and turn off all the little bells and whistles and pings and dings mm-hmm. that show you you've done something wrong, and yeah. just keep moving forward. You know, that's, that's really smart. interesting, because I, I never thought of that before. There's an app. <laughs> There's an app for that. <laughs> There's an app, I uh, I can't remember what it's called, but in, a, in Ubuntu Linux, like all of our computers run Ubuntu Linux where, wherever possible, um, a plug for that. But there's, an, there's a book writing app, and I thought, it's really weird. And I thought it was bizarre because what this app does, <clears throat> it just brings up the whole screen white. It's just a blank white screen, and it inhibits anything else from beeping or pinging or anything else. It just completely takes over. It gives you a white screen, and there's nothing but your words, and it, with a lot of white space around them, you know. And there's no spell check, and there's no—I mean, it's just nothing but your words. And then you close it, and it's saved. And they, it has very minimal features, except for you know chapters. You can do chapters, but other than that, it's like it's the minimalist. It's like really a big blank white piece of paper, almost like a typewriter. It's not going to bark at right. you about anything. I thought that's very clever. Oh, and also, well, I have a friend it, who's a, like a grammar. <clears throat> 
I have a friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a little latency there. I have a friend who's a, also a grammar buff, and he's always accusing me of abusing the ellipse. Because when I type, I go dot, 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 dot. Instead of commas, sometimes I'll go dot, dot, dot. Because yeah. I want the reader to see a long pause, and maybe that's stupid, but I tell him that's well, my you style. Know, I, 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 would, I, would, I would tell your, 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 uh, <laughs> your, your, your grammar fascist to get a life. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Rick? Um, <laughs> an expert, an award-winning author. Um, <laughs> But, but sorry, I just bounced it. But seriously, you know, again, if you're writing an email, if you're writing something online, who cares? Yeah, well, if you're yeah. writing a, you know, if no. you're writing an article or you're writing a book or writing something more concrete, then yeah, ultimately there are certain things you have to be aware of. But the bottom line is, you don't in that first draft or even in that second no draft, they simply don't matter. Doesn't matter because you've got lots of time, lots of drafts, maybe even the help of an editor to deal with that stuff down the line. Yeah, you don't right. want to do anything in those early drafts that yeah. gets in the way of getting the words on the page. That's yeah. part. I think it's all part of structure, like we were talking about before. Let the stru- yes. let it go. Yes. That's part of structure. Exactly. You deal with it later. You can you can strike a happy compromise with your editor later mm-hmm. about That's that right. after it's finished. So, right. Yeah. I love what you said, but, but that book writing app you just mentioned. I'll will give a I'll give a, a minor plug for Max Pages program okay. because it does. It, it does have a similar feature. It's not it's not quite as all or nothing as that, but you can use a, a key combination to blank out everything else on your screen and just have the, the document you're working on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it. Um, on the chat room. They're saying that's great advice, or or you can just use Notepad instead of having to turn yeah. everything off. That way, it's easier. Um, right. And then they write, it's not stupid. Typing on the web chat email is different than writing a book or marketing material. Absolutely. Dot, dot, dot. Absolutely. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask you um, about your about your book, um, The Voice of, of the Muse, uh, that you write about um, the myth of writer's block. And do you really believe that writer's block doesn't exist? There's your video. Well, I guess what I would say to that is that um, writer's block, as we define it, doesn't really exist. Um, Mm -hmm. There are lots of reasons why we can get stuck, and there's no reason at all why we need to stay stuck. Um, uh, You know, frankly, I mean, there's a section of the book called The Myth of Writer's Block, and I I, I titled that kind of to be intentionally provocative. Um, Right. But basically, we get stuck for lots of reasons. We get stuck because we we were in judgment. We talked about judgment before because we're we're looking at every word and trying to make it perfect. Perfectionism is a great way to get stuck. Um, we get stuck because we're writing something we don't care about. We're writing about something that 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 maybe we think is a good idea, but isn't an idea that really fires us up. And at a certain right. point, we just run out of fuel. Right. Um, we get stuck because maybe. We're writing something, and it's not the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was when I was writing the Moon Quest, I stopped working on the book for five months, um, and when I went back to it, um, and a whole, whole bunch of life stuff got in the way, which is the reason I stopped. When I got back to it, I was c- kind of concerned that maybe um, I had moved beyond the book, and mm-hmm. when I reread what I had written and began to write again, I realized that I hadn't moved beyond the book. I had to catch up with the book. I had to I had to have life experiences that prepared me to continue with the story, gotcha. and so sometimes when we get stuck, we think we're stuck. We're not stuck. We just ab- actually need a break to catch up with the material. So there are all kinds of reasons why we get stuck, and perhaps the best way to avoid getting stuck, at least in terms of those judgment perfectionist issues, is to put your fingers on the keyboard or, or, or hold that pen on the pad and write through without stopping for any reason, especially mm-hmm. for those those perfectionist um, editing, spelling, punctuation, grammar reasons, mm-hmm. and just keep going. Keep mm-hmm. going. And and those are, those are ways that will really keep it going because ultimately, when we get stuck, it's because we're not prepared to surrender to the material. It's because we, we decide that we're in charge, we're smarter than, than, than the story, we're smarter than the, than the characters, we're smarter than the book, we're smarter than, 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 than the material. And frankly, we're not. One of my birthing your book rules says, your book is smarter than you are. And I don't know about you, but everything I've written has been way smarter than me. Right. 
mm-hmm. re, you know, just it's what I call let go and let God. You know, whatever, yes, absolutely. whatever it's your exact, spiritual it's, it's beliefs exactly. are, if whatever your higher power, universe, muse, whatever the heck in the world you want to call it, I call it God. But let go and let God is that you know that's that's all it is. Let go and let God. And yeah, and then Nike. You know, that's the number one thing. And the Nike rule: just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Go. Don't stop. That's it. Just exactly. do it, do it, do it, do it. It's like us with these shows. You know, we just you just start. You're gonna. I mean, you're gonna get criticism, but remember, you, the most probably the harshest criticism is gonna come from yourself when you Absolutely. watch it and go, "Oh my God, that's terrible." You know, or you read it and go, and, "Oh my God, that's horrible." <laughs> but, and that's you know, why you keep writing through that because generally what happens you is you say, "Oh my God, it's horrible. I, I better stop." <laughs> or I better change something. Yeah, but you got to keep going. That's right. If you write through the judgment. You get past it because, frankly, better. the improve. things we're most judgmental about in the moment are often the most powerful pieces of mm-hmm. the work. Right. They and just the freak biggest, us out. That's true. And they're the biggest lessons that you learn from and improve, too, as you go along. You may improve. Like, if you... If there's you know any flaws or whatever you 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 can't help but notice it. But if you keep, if you, as long as you don't stop, your work will get better, right? Whatever. You well, do. the other spiritual principle, things you brought up, let go, let God, that is critical in writing. And by the way, one of my I think one of my rules for writing says, forget everything you ever learned about writing and remember everything you ever knew about spirituality. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely on the, on the same page with you mm-hmm. on that. Um, but one of the other things that's really important. Is to be in the moment. You know, we, we, we spend yes. so much of our lives and so much of our creative lives worrying about what we've just written and judging it, and being and worrying about what's going to come next, and being afraid of, afraid that nothing's going to come. Right. Mm-hmm. And if we just stay in the moment with each with each word and move forward word by word, then nothing then 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 we're fine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yep. You know, unless you've got some kind of a respiratory ailment. You don't worry about where your next breath is going to come from. It just comes. And there's nothing you have to do to make it come. Yeah. And frankly, your words are exactly the same way. If you let the words come, they'll come. Yeah, if, exactly. you, if you struggle and fight and worry and judge, mm-hmm. then they don't come. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's exactly right. <laughs> and I can see so many parallels. I know we're talking about writing, which I'm really interested in writing, too, because I've got, a, I've got a two or three books in me. <laughs> but at least, but uh, we're talking about writing. But it's I see so many parallels with doing uh, our doing a show like what we're doing. You know, video netcasting. You know, everybody. You so many people want to write a book, and so many people want to do a sh- show like this. We were just Ed and I were just talking on our way to dinner last night. We were talking about how. Um, what keeps people from doing it as far as doing a show? And I was actually reading this little manual about um, audio. It was actually audio issues and things I was learning about, like because I'm, I'm not an audio expert. Anyway, one of the things that they said in this this is a microphone company that made this manual, right? They said people uh, don't do video podcasts as much as audio podcasts because they're afraid of the camera. They're they're intimidated by being on the camera. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to ego. And I said, yes. you know, the difference is that uh, mo- most people get their self-esteem from their ego. And we don't. We're not attached to our ego. You know, we don't really care. Because we're not getting, we're not relying on our ego or what other people think of us for our own self-esteem. We're already happy with ourselves. We're very, very, very happy. We don't care what anybody says. We are not attached to that. And most people are very, very attached to what others are thinking of them and saying about them. It's it's devastating to them if somebody criticizes them. Right. Well that's how but that's how we're conditioned. And yeah. so again, it goes back to the unlearning we talked about before. You've got to unlearn that. Yeah. You learn it, you can unlearn it, but it's but but it's a journey and it's a journey that's that's not widely supported out in the world, whether right. we're talking about aspects of our lives or talking about our, our, our writing and our creative process. Yeah. Um, interesting, you, you, you talked about the, the webcam, you know, I, um, I offer a coaching group um, through, conf- through a conference call, um, in fact I've got one starting up on Sunday, but I do it, I've been doing it that way not through a webcam kind of setup because I keep hearing from people that um, they don't want to be on camera. People are so self-conscious, yep. <laughs> both about the camera and about the te- and they're and they're afraid of the technology. Yeah. So you know, uh, conference call. All you need is a telephone with, a long, with long distance <laughs> access. Yeah. And it's not as personal, but it's uh-huh. safer. That's I right. Guess. I have a term for that. 
We, I call it, uh, there's two things. I call it um, hiding behind a keyboard. There's the hiding behind the <laughs> keyboard sim- syndrome where people, people, you know, this is a this is a universal human thing apparently. When the, people are texting or online in an internet chat room or an internet forum or Twitter, anything, uh, maybe a little less with Twitter because you're, it's kind of a, associated with your identity, but anything like a forum or a chat room where there's the more anonymity, also the better for this. Uh, people hide behind a keyboard and they could be very mean. They, they they treat people in a way that they they're like they're not people they just they just like vent and spew all kinds of garbage and it's the hiding behind the keyboard syndrome they would rather hide behind a keyboard in 20 some things with their technology and texting it's I mean part of it is multitasking that I can carry on a, some sort of a conversation with 35 people at once if I'm texting do 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 it's machine gun rapid fire you know no attention span culture but hiding behind the keyboard I can say things. And you would, you would, you would, you might say something to somebody that you really wouldn't say face to face, you know, <laughs> you, whatever, whatever it may be. All right, then there's the next level up, which is um, hiding behind a voice. I call it voice on the phone, the voice on the phone, because mm-hmm. I can be on the phone with you, and I might, I might say something. Same thing as a podcast or audio. Like that's why there's a hundred million times more audio podcasts because I can be behind a microphone. Maybe my, I'm okay with my voice and I can just talk into the microphone and we, I can do that or I can talk to you on the phone, but I don't want you to see me. And that's why that's why we don't have video telephones because nobody yeah. wanted them. Nobody mm-hmm. wanted them until now. I mean, people are using Skype, but they're really not using Skype as a video telephone. They're using it for like what we're using it for. Right. They're using it for adult purposes which is like 85 percent of all internet traffic and so but there's they're not really you and they're also grandma looking at the grandkids and stuff like that but people are not using it for everyday communication because i mean it's going to happen because it just it's going to be de facto built in there's it's not going to be an option but uh people still will turn it off i'm sure they hide behind the keyboard and this is going to date me um Mm -hmm. i grew up in montreal and Expo 67 was uh, was the big World's Fair um, uh, celebrating Canada's 100th birthday. And the Bell Pavilion, the yes. telephone pavilion, I, I know what you're saying. back in 1967 was showing video calls. Mm-hmm. Um, and here we are, how many years later, and we're still very reluctant mm-hmm. to embrace that. I, was, now, course, I remember that. that. I was... The other piece of that is I can... I can talk to you in my pajamas mm-hmm. um, on the phone. I'm not going to do that on a video call. So, um, well, how do you know, we know you have? For this, how do we know you don't have your pajamas show, on right now? Doing a radio interview, I could, I, I could have not. <laughs> so there, 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 there are you know things that we need to do yeah. to present ourselves. You have to comb your hair and stuff. I know. Put comb on a my shirt. hair, you know, uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> make sure you know. Make sure for us yeah. that the lighting is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas if I'm on the phone, I could I could be downstairs where it's darker. Right. Um, yeah. Or in my car, or or, or whatever. You, so I, you, I can have answered the phone this, in the shower before. This does present some restrictions. Yeah. Well, not in the shower. <laughs> my, my phone isn't waterproof. I can yeah. the bathtub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop it. Just don't <laughs> drop it. Yeah. Uh, well, it's I wanted true. to. So there are some. Rest- yeah. Go it's ahead. It's true. Let me. I just I, wanted to say one more thing ahead. real quick. The um, about that. I I remember. I mean, obviously, I wasn't born until '79, but. Uh, the uh, but I do remember the commercials for those uh, the the AT and T video phone and all that and the announcements and yeah, yeah I remember by that. 1980 everyone will have a video telephone right. and all that. but actually now sense. Ed's new phone just uh, this is a total sidebar but Ed's new phone he ordered the, the HTC Evo which is just unbelievable we we were played in it for, with it for hours at Best Buy the other day they only have one you know dis- they ha- actually have a, a display model but they can't get them in. Otherwise, but anyway, he's going to get it probably today, and it has two cameras, so it's got the video calling and all that, so we know about yeah. that. Our chatter um, uh, saying iPhone 4 might change that. Yes, Bruce, Apple can do good things, yes. wink, wink. Yes. And previous to that, I just wanted to mention really quick, because it was the previous topic, she, uh, the chatter, I don't know uh, who it is, it's Vaso Krita. I think our culture is too focused on the end result, often feeling it is unrealistic and not focused on simply the journey and leaving the end to unfold and shape itself. Amen. So basically, amen. Yes. I, I believe David's <laughs> block on yeah. ADD. Did you read that one? Uh, a lot of the no. a lot of the coaching work I do um, 
is focused not on the product but on the process. Mm -hmm. um, right. And a lot of the creativity coaching, writing coaching work I do strays into life coaching because, frankly, if you've got an issue with your writing, you've probably got the same issue in your life. And I can't, we can't fix one without dealing with the other. Right. Uh, and it really is the journey, you know. Um, in um, again, when I teach, I say, "How many people would like would like your first draft to be your last draft?" Of course, everyone raises their hands, <laughs> and um, and I, you know, and how many people believe your first draft can be your last draft? And very few people raise their hands. Um, it is a process. It is a journey. And um, one of my rules for something or other is <laughs> relax. It's only your first draft. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Because we're so again, we're so conditioned that everything has to be perfect from the outset, which is, of course, why my hair is combed and I'm dressed for the, for the you know, for, the, for this interview. Um, you put your pajama bottoms on. We don't allow any. We don't allow any space. Right. Um, to we don't allow any space to make mistakes. And again, uh. it comes back to judgment and comes back to to fear and it comes back to all the ways that we're conditioned to get it right from the outset with no space to grow or learn in the process. And that's as true in life as it, as it is in writing. I have a couple quick questions for from someone who's never written uh, a book or anything. Uh, what A couple questions I've always wanted to know, and you can help. What, like, for example, when you write a first draft, you, like you say, you just let it flow and you just don't worry about the form or anything. Just get, the, get it on paper and you just write, 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 and just let it flow, right? Then you have a first draft. Then... What happens next? Like typically, how many drafts are there, and who who do you let read it, and things like that? Okay, that, 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 there's a whole bunch of questions packed into that. Yeah, the, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm spewing questions now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. Um, the the first thing to remember, we're ta let's let's say we're talking about a book, for example, is that. Your book truly is smarter than you are, and let's let's get all woo and metaphysical for a second, and mm -hmm. and I'll suggest that the completed book, the final book, the published version of that book already exists, kind of somewhere mm -hmm. in the ethers in your energy field. Yeah, right. Um, and what you're doing is you're you're traveling that journey within your within your own being to get from blank page to that. You're birthing it. So if you if you can trust at some level even if it's a stretch for you, that that, that, that finished book exists somewhere uh -huh. and can surrender to that and listen to that and, and, and get out of the way to let that come through, then um, the editing and revision process is a whole lot easier. Yeah. You know, I also teach a revision class, which is, again, kind of radical because we're taught that editing is all kind of a left brain activity and creativity is all a right brain activity and I say no, they're both kind of whole brain activities mm -hmm. and you need to edit with both sides of your brain mm -hmm. and and do that as intuitively as you write. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, um, Makes sense. I finished, well, two stories. The first draft of the Moon Quest, mm -hmm. Moon Quest, Moon Quest was, was a single chapter. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know the story. How could I structure something? How could I how could I throw in chapter breaks when I didn't know what I was doing except as I was doing it? Because right. because when this story happened to me, um, I was teaching a writing class, and for some bizarre reason, I felt called to do the exercise which I never do when I'm teaching. And what came out of me that <laughs> night was the first scene of the first draft of a story I knew nothing about, absolutely nothing about it. Um, is this is this, this is fiction though, right? It's fiction, yes. But it's yes. because it says a true story, but it's a true true fiction. I, it's, <laughs> I call it a true fantasy. The whole true, true fantasy. fantasy thing is a whole other story, which, oh. we, which we can get yeah. to if all you right, want. All right, all right. But it's not a true story, okay. except, except, except in a very, except in the sense that all fiction is true, okay. which is yes. in the sense of you know, it's it's an expression of the human heart. Right. Um, Okay. And as I revised the book, as I began to see what the story truly was, I intuitively, I didn't sit down and say, well, every chapter has to be 10 pages, so I'm going to stop it right here. Mm -hmm. I began to feel out what the structure of the book was. I began to sense what the, what, what the, what the book was. I began to listen to the book and its structure and, and, and did it that way. So that's fiction. Yeah. But you know, the, the voice of the muse also happened to be in a similar way. And um, 
with the voice of the muse, I ended up with a stack of a stack of pages um, with no sense of how it was all going to come together. Mm -hmm. I I had actually written the a bunch of the inspirational vignettes in that book for me when I was feeling a need for for inspiration. And one day I wondered if I had enough material for a book, and I printed everything out, and I went to a, a, a cafe in Sedona, and I stared at this stack of pages and said, if you're a book, you better tell me what you're about, because I have no idea what to do with you. <laughs> and um, I went through you know, each little, little segment, piece by piece, started making piles, started organizing, not in a strictly logical, mind-centered way, but again, in a whole brain way, I just I just felt it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we... It goes back to what I was saying before about surrender. My attitude is that the book is smarter than I am, that the book chose me to write it, that the book knows what it's about better than I perhaps ever will. And so if I get just get out of the way and let it guide me, then I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I know that in the Moon Quest, you uh, the theme is some of the theme is uh, creativity and also self-esteem. Um, so I, you incorporated what you do into the even though it's a novel. <laughs> That's right. Great. Well, yeah, I, I kind of joke that the Moon Quest is a fictional version of the Voice of the Muse. But once again, gotcha. um, with the Moon Quest, I sat down to write every day, not knowing what the <laughs> what I was doing, um, and the themes emerged organically. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was writing a story about blocked creativity or a story about, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just writing. Mm -hmm. And because I trusted the book to be smarter than me, um, That's key. those themes emerged organically. And of course, when I went back to revise the book, I could strengthen the themes, but they were already there. Um, another example, I'm running, working on a sequel to the Moon Quest, it's called The Star Quest, and I actually talk a bit about this in the, in the blog post I just put out last night. Um, it's a fantasy again, there's a villain who, ha who one would think would have to come to a sorry end, because that's usually what happens in these stories. And that was my, that was my thought, you know. Um, I've got, a, I've got a, a nasty villain who's going to come to a bad end <laughs> in the final scenes of the book. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing on the very last day of the first draft, and suddenly, as I'm writing, the the this character does not go down in flames. She has a profoundly redemptive experience, and becomes good. And I was incredibly startled because it was nothing I could have consciously come up with, and incredibly amazed because at that moment I recognized that redemption was a theme of the book. I didn't know that when I started, but I knew it nice. by that point. And I thought how profound and how much and how much stronger the theme becomes because this character isn't, you know, doesn't go down in flames, but is redeemed. And wow. that was not something I thought up. Wow, that was something great. the character did on her own, and <laughs> I'm simply writing it as it's happening. Wow, Amazing. that's great. Well, we're cool. we're out of time. You want to yeah. uh, tell our viewers how the names of the books again and how to sure. buy them? Sure. Um, the Voice of the Muse, Answering the Call to Write. And let me just reach over for it. And mm -hmm. The Moon Quest, A True Fantasy. And, of course, The Voice of the Muse, Companion. There we go. They're all available on my website, markdavidgerson.com. They're also available um, on Amazon.com. However, if you order from my website and, and make that request, I'm happy to sign the books for you. Oh. Um, and everything you want to know about what I'm doing and, and where I'm doing it and how I'm doing it is really available on the website. And one, and one last plug, account. if you are writing or wanting to be writing and want some professional help in a group, either in a group setting or not, I do do coaching. I actually have a <laughs> coaching group starting up on that conference call awesome. coming Sunday evening. MarkDavidGerson.com. MarkDavidGerson.com. Just check our show notes at BritTV.com. Thanks for joining there. us. Yes, thanks. thanks for being here. With us. It, was a, it was a delight. I'm glad we finally got to do it. So awesome. That's awesome. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.